Hi everyone, it's Julie from Sprouts and Stems here. I'm back. I took a week off because it was my birthday weekend and Labor Day weekend, which is a holiday weekend here in the U.S. So thanks for bearing with me. I'm back this week to talk about cat proofing plants. And before I get started with my tips, I will say I grew up with two cats, both who passed away within the past year, rest in peace. And I now have this little crazy girl, Giselle, who's currently having the zoomies. So maybe you'll be able to hear her. So I do, I do think I'm pretty qualified to talk about ways to keep your plants away from your cats. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stop it. But I know that all cats are different. All cats are crazy in their own way. And this list is not going to be perfect for every single cat. So you don't have to comment, oh, this my, this would never work for my cat. I know. I know it's not perfect. But I do think these tips are very helpful. Please subscribe to my channel and please check out the link to my Patreon in the description. I post early access content there, ad-free and early. And I also post exclusive and behind the scenes content that I don't post here on YouTube. So please check that out if you'd like to support my channel. And now we'll get into the video. So I have six tips today and a bonus tip at the end. I'm starting to think about bringing my plants in for the colder weather. It's still September here in Tennessee. It's not going to be cold anytime soon, but just have to start brainstorming what I'm going to do with my balcony plants outside. So starting to think about some, some other ideas that I can implement. Now, with all of these tips, my suggestion is to go through your plants and categorize your plants into toxic to animals. And by the way, this can work for dogs too. I'm just focusing on cats because I feel like they're more mischievous. Go through your plants and categorize them into toxic and non-toxic to animals. The ASPCA is, yeah, it is them. Yeah, the ASPCA's website has a really good list and search feature you can use to do that. And then prioritize the toxic ones. But just know that even, and I have personal experience with this with one of my old cats, even if a plant is non-toxic, it can still cause problems for your pets. Like it might cause tummy trouble and some vomiting and stuff. So even though it might not kill them, you still want to try to keep your plants away from your pets. So tip number one, can you guess? Can you guess? Yay, wall clips. And if you don't want to use these plant wall clips because you don't know if they're what they're gonna do to to the wall when you go to take them off, you can use command hooks with twist ties because command hooks are really good at coming off a wall without damaging it. But the general idea is where is one of them? Can you see? Can you see this one? Can you see it? It's basically just a little clip that sticks. To the wall and hold your vines and that way the vines are up off of the ground and not dangling around waiting for a certain somebody to attack them. So use wall space and plant clips and command hooks. And can you guess what my second tip is? Tension rod! <laughs> if you saw my last or was my last video? One of my most recent videos, I did this setup. I did the wall clips and the tension rod system. I had this like three rod system already. So I used these. It's basically one here, one on the other side of the window, and then one that goes across from the two poles. But you don't need to get this whole thing. You could just get one tension rod that goes across the window from one wall to the other. If you have a smaller window or even like a doorway, 
you can easily hang, install a tension rod and hang some smaller plants there. Okay, so those are tips one and two. Tip number three is basically shelves, but like fill them up with stuff so that there's no extra room for anybody to try and hop up there. So uh, I know some people don't like tchotchkes, but this might be a case where tchotchkes and knickknacks and doodads and all that could be really helpful or just like books or something, fill it up with books and then put like a plant here and then fill it up with books. Make the shelf unjumpable. So I know that's a really simple one and cats love shelves, but it is possible. Tip number four, again, is using wall space, but with either like plant hangers that attach the wall. There are, you can find things on Amazon that are kind of like a little teardrop shaped basket or something and the plant goes inside and they rest nicely against the wall or with something like hooks that you might normally install outside but there's no reason you can't install them inside and I don't have any in this apartment but you might remember in my previous apartment I had a hook that was just hanging off the wall like that here's the wall here's the hook and then I hung my crocodile fern from that so I'll put a picture or like a video clip or something in here so you can see. Oh, and another idea that I saw on Google somewhere a few months ago, and I think I might do this one in the next couple of months, is if you, if you wanna hang plants on your wall and you have a bunch of them, but you don't wanna drill a million holes in your wall, you can get a ladder, like a flat, well, not like a step ladder, but like a flat decorative ladder. You can get plant pots that are meant to hang, like it's a pot, they're pots with like little hooks on them that are meant to like hang over like a balcony or something. You can get those and then hang them on each rung of the ladder. Really all you have to do is attach the ladder to the wall so you're not attaching a billion different pots to your wall. You're just ladder against the wall and then like attach attach it at the top or something. I don't know the logistics of drilling a ladder to the wall, but you get what I'm saying. This is exhibit A, a ladder. It's leaning flat up against the wall. It's not, it's not leaning, it is flat up against the wall. And you could just attach it to the wall here and there. And then you have all these rungs to hang plants off of. I hope that was helpful. Tip number five, we're out here and the lights actually just shut off because they're on a timer. So it's kind of dark, but a cabinet. And it doesn't have to be a fancy schmancy greenhouse cabinet. It can literally be like a closet or just like an old wooden cabinet that you find at a secondhand store. And if you saw, I'll link this video here too. If you saw my spring 2023 plant tour, you'll see that I did that with my armoire that I had in my childhood bedroom. So I put a bunch of plants in there and use grow lights. Anything with a door, it doesn't have to be clear. Of course, it's nice if it's clear because then you can like see your plants, but you know, if, if you're really desperate to keep plants away from your furry friends, just any kind of cabinet you can find, as long as you have grow lights, that's really all you need. I have grow lights in here, they're strips. Giselle, my cat, likes to even play with the wires. So I basically just tucked most of the wires in the cabinet itself. And then just this little wire to the outlet is right there. So as long as you have grow lights, you can do a lot. You can put them in a closet if you have like a separate room that the cat doesn't go in, but maybe there's no windows or something that's fine because you can get grow lights. 
Oh, hi, baby. Giselle. Oh. And let's see, are we on the last? Okay. Tip number six. She's checking it out, actually. Chip. Chip. Tip number six is terrariums. Now, this terrarium, I just happened to build from a fish tank just because I wanted to. And luckily I did because then when the time came and I adopted a cat, I was easily able to go get a lid for the tank. And it's been the perfect solution. She like snips at it, she paws at it, but she can't get in. And I don't want to show you my whole messy apartment, but you guys know this terrarium I've had for a while. It's, I've had like different things inside, different setups, but <clears throat> this birdcage vintage, vintage-esque closed terrarium I've had for a while. And then another one. Now this is an open one. Where is it? This one, you guys probably also know this one. It's an open terrarium and she was kind of like sticking her head in it when I had it on the top shelf, but now it's in there and like it fits just perfectly so that the shelf like covers the opening. So terrariums, terrariums are your friend. My bonus tip is basically just to find ways to minimize temptation as much as possible. When I put my Monstera up on the wall in the other room, I definitely trimmed off some vines and leaves that were like sticking out and kind of like spring and boing and like very tempting for a young cat to play with. This, for example, she can't get up here but this if this was closer to the ground just flopping about i might try to wrap it around wrap it around itself so it's not so like floppy and springy or i might trim it and propagate it so just find ways to minimize temptation know what your cat likes to play with so if you have any other tips that you use for your furry friends, cats, dogs, any pet that you have that roams around the house and can get into things, please let us know in the comments. That's it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new planty content. Check out my Patreon link for exclusive planty content that I don't post anywhere else. And let's see, let's see if we can get her to say goodbye. Come here, come here you. Oh, she wants to play. She wants to play. <laughs> My baby. My baby. Meow. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and have a great day. Bye.